Hello students, today I am going to talk about the nuclear disarmament. But the context of this particular video is you might have watched in the TV or read in the newspaper that Russia has threatened to use the nuclear weapon against Ukraine. Likewise, China has also threatened to use the nuclear weapon in the ongoing China-Taiwan crisis. So basically, at this juncture of time, European countries might be thinking that why they have abandoned the nuclear weapons. For example, Ukraine and the other European countries are thinking of that why in the past they have abandoned the nuclear weapon and had dream of nuclear free world. So in this context, we will look into the pertinent questions. For example, the very first thing we will see that what is the status of nuclear arms today. Likewise, we will have to see that what is the issue of nuclearization in South Asia. And then we will see that whether we can have the nuclear free world or not. Basically, there is an argument for and against. Some of the advocates are arguing that yes, it is possible that we can have the nuclear free world. Otherwise, most of the realist thinkers are of the view that nuclear free world is neither feasible nor desirable. After that, we will see that what has been the international efforts for the denuclearization and India's effort for the denuclearization and its analysis, that why it has not happened yet. So in this context, the very first thing, the status of the nuclear arms trade. For this, I am just quoting the report of a Stockholm International Peace Research Institute and it has highlighted that USA and Russia has 90% of the nuclear weapons and the absolute number of the nuclear weapons have declined but it is expected that in the next decade it is going to rise. Then if you will see in the case of India then we have more than one 20 nuclear warheads. Then again, the Turkey, if you will say, then Turkey has an ambition or with the revival of Turkey, they have an ambition of having the nuclear weapon. Likewise, we know that what is going on in Iran. And because of the Iran, Turkey is also aspiring for having the nuclear weapon of its own. So basically, this is the status of nuclear arms today. But basically, we will have to talk in detail about the South Asia because India being the region in the South Asian continent. So now you will see that what is happening and why it is being said that the strategic stability in the South Asian region has been undermined. But before going into the regions of the strategic stability, what is the meaning of strategic stability? It simply means that you are very sure that your adversary will not attack on you because of the nuclear deterrent capability. Nuclear deterrent capability. So basically, this idea of strategic stability is based on the idea of nuclear deterrence. But today it is being said that this idea of nuclear deterrence is in itself is in question. So, what is the reason for this? The very first reason, if you will see, then Pakistan is developing tactical nuclear weapons. And in the case of China, it has been aggressive. Then you will see the rise of hybrid warfare. And the lethality of the hybrid warfare. Everybody knows this. Then modernization of the nuclear weapon. Then we are looking into the use of high velocity nuclear weapons and multi-track multi entry vehicles. Multi-track entry vehicles. Then also you will see that major players, major nuclear powered states are in the Indian Ocean region because of the rising China and the USA being a hegemon trying to has the hegemony or the rise of 
assertive China. So basically this is the reason that we are looking into the nuclear question in the South Asia. Now we will see the need of the nuclear free world. Why we are talking about the nuclear free world? Because it has the social cost, it has an economic cost and it has an environmental cost. If I will talk about the environmental cost, then you are well aware about the impact of Nagasaki on Japan because of the radiation it makes wind of the particular reason polluted. Then there is a problem of ocean acidification also. Ocean acidification. Then if I will have to look into the social problems and the social issues with respect to nuclearization, then its impact on the health system, health system of the people, economy. Any country having the nuclear needs to maintain it, needs to maintain the stockpiling and that requires Fund needs to maintain the stockpiling and also the deployment and development in the nuclear weapons is already going on. Therefore, for that they need money. If the nuclear powered states would not invest in the development of the nuclear weapon, then it can be used for a better purpose, for better societal purpose. Now, there is one question which comes in my mind. And is it possible to have the nuclear free world? So you can say yes and no. Yes and no. So yes it is feasible or no it is not feasible. So arguments for there is no any feasibility because of the rise of rogue states like North Korea, Pakistan. Then it is because of realist understanding of the world. Realist understanding of the world. It is also because of nuclear organized crime which is happening. Nuclear organized crime. It is also because there is no consensus between the nuclear powered states. If you will see that between USA and between Russia and in the Cold War between USA and USSR, there has been a mini negotiation like a start, like salt negotiation, but nothing has arrived at the conclusion. And recently in 2022, last month, there is a review conference which was going on in NPT. There also we have seen that Russia was not agreeing and because of the Russia, there has not been consensus on the NPT review committee. Then, yes, it is feasible to have the nuclear free world. There can be many arguments for this. So here, <coughs> you will have to show that what good is happening in the context of making the world nuclear free. The very first thing is Pell Endeavor Treaty. Well, the Endeavour Treaty is related to African continent. There has been consensus between the African continent that there will be no activities associated with the nuclear, any kind of nuclear activities will not be done in the African continent. And therefore, they are talking about establishing the zone of peace for the next 30 years. Along with this, there are many NGO like ICAN that has made a pitch for the nuclear free world and there has been a campaign at the global level. Along with this, UN in 2017 has started a nuclear ban, total ban on the nuclear treaty that is also talking about the prohibition. Then Cuba and the other 120 countries have a conference on the disarmament. So there are many things which is happening for making the nuclear free world. But lastly, I will say that it is not possible. Now, why it is not possible? Because we don't look at the international politics from the liberal school and from social constructivist school. We look into the international relation.
from the idea of Morgenthau, from the idea of Milsheimer, who are who belongs to the lib realist school. Okay, the realist school believes in having the nuclear so that there is a self-help. No one is coming to help you at the time of crisis, and therefore you need to have the nuclear weapon. Now we will see the next thing that what are the efforts? The very first effort is by US and USSR. That is the SALT negotiation and a start. That is a strategic arms limitation treaty. And in this SALT treaty, what was happening that there is a ban on having the, there is a ban or prohibition, you can say. There is a ban and prohibition on development of new ballistic missile. However, the problem here is that you can have the submarine launched submarine launched ballistic missile if you will destroy the intercontinental ballistic missile or earlier SLMB. So if you want to develop new one, you will have to destroy the old one and you can develop the new one. I don't know what is the logic behind this. Then a start treaty. That is that is a start. Okay. That is a start treaty again. It is talking about that there should be reduction in the offensive weapons. Then there has been a diplomatic efforts like CTBT, NPT, Fischl, uh, that is the cutoff treaty, FCT, that is the fissile ban on the cutoff treaty, that you cannot produce plutonium, you cannot produce highly enriched <coughs> uranium. So that is that comes under the fissile material cutoff treaty. And this is CTBT and that is the comprehensive test ban treaty and nuclear proliferation treaty. This has been the effort at the UN level. Then there are many groups which comes under multilateral export control regime like Australian group, Wassenaar group, Okay, then MTCR, then uh, you can talk about nuclear supply group. So basically, these groups are prohibiting. For example, nuclear supply group is prohibiting on any kind of nuclear technology. Australian group is prohibiting the chemical and the biological weapons. Like Wassenaar group, Wassenaar group is. <coughs> <laughs> the Wassenaar group and basically MTCR, Wassenaar group is looking into the use of, dual use of any weapons and MTCR is looking into the aerial vehicles, that is to prohibit the aerial weapons. In this way, these are the efforts. At the level of India also, we have also taken many efforts at the global level. For example, Pandit Nehru has talked about the stand still agreement with respect to the nuclear weapon, that we will have to stop this. Then in 1963, India has been the part of partial test ban treaty. Then India also, Rajiv Gandhi action plan, Rajiv Gandhi disarmament action plan, that talks about the commitment from all the member states to come to the conclusion and to come to the time bound framing for eradicating all the nuclear weapons and not having the new nuclear weapons. Understood? Now again, another one is in 1967, India was amongst the non-aligned country that has struck at the UN that we, we, we need to delink, we need to delink the idea of denuclearization and proliferation proliferation and denuclearization. This has been the efforts at the level of global and at the Indian level. Now analysis of efforts. Analysis of efforts here, whenever I am talking about the whether it is feasible to have the nuclear free world and not, here I am talking about no it is not feasible because if you will see that USA withdraw from INF treaty in 1987 and again Russia is also not abiding by the principle of INF treaty. Likewise, if you will see, then International Atomic Energy Agency lacks proper funding. 
then also if you will see then npt review committee has failed to come at the conclusion because of the because of the russia because russia has recently took over <laughs> took over the nuclear <coughs> arrangements of the ukraine likewise i just talking about i was talking about the turkey that the turkey has also an interest in having the nuclear then india has criticized npt and india is right in criticizing npt because india say that npt is dividing the world into nuclear haves and nuclear have not because it is telling that those who have nuclear profile or nuclear weapon before 1967 they not they don't need to destroy it but the new members should not develop the nuclear weapon what kind of treaty is this this is discriminatory in the nature likewise there is no any time bound mechanism under which they will have to destroy the nuclear weapon and therefore the idea of the nuclear free world is not possible if you will give these arguments now this is all about the understanding of the nuclear free world and therefore if you want to have or if you want to conclude the understanding of the nuclear disarmament then i will say the very first thing what is required is verification of the nuclear weapon once you will verify the nuclear weapon by using the international atomic energy agency then only you can think of disarm then only you can think of destroy the nuclear weapon but i know that in the international politics it is very difficult to attain the objectives of the nuclear free world and to come together for the nuclear free world so that's all about the understanding of nuclear disarmament i hope you have understood the dimensions of the disarmament thank you